you the same question. The usual. Sounding things out, making myself useful to people, exploiting as best as possible with small talents. I'm able to command. You got some business with the master of the house. Yes. I have a little project in hand from which I hope to gain some recompense. From him? I'll tell you, you'd have to be very expert to get anything out of him. There are certain services one can do people that have a miraculous effect. I'm begging your ladyship's pardon, but you don't know Signor Arpagon. There's nothing you can do that'll make him put his hand in his pocket. He never says he'll give you his word on something. He says he'll lend it. No trouble. I can draw people out. I can make people open their hearts to me like a flower. To the morning dew. I have an instinct, you see, for their soft spots. I defy you to get round the party in question on the topic of money. You could starve to death and he wouldn't bat an eyelid. To ask him for money is to get him where it hurts. It's to stab him through the heart. It's to tear out his innards. And if you... Excuse me. <laughs> Everything's all right. <laughs> well, Frazier, what can I do for you? You're looking very well today. Quite the picture of health. You really think so? Well, never have I seen you looking so hale and hot. Oh, you're having me on. Honestly, I have never seen you looking so young. I've seen men of 25 look older than you. Uh, well, I'm well over 60, you know. 60. <laughs> What's that? It's nothing. It's the best age to be. You are entering your prime. Well, yes, I know that. I wouldn't mind losing 20 years. Oh, you're joking. You don't need to lose years. You'll make a hundred with no problem. Oh, you really believe that? Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't say it if I did. You have all the signs. Would you just hold yourself upright? <laughs> oh, yes. Definitely there. Between the eyes. The sign of long life. You know all about that sort of thing. It's one of my specialities. <laughs> Show me your well, hand. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, look at that knife flying. Well, well, can't you see how far round it goes? Well, what does it mean? Well, I know, I said a hundred. This looks more like a hundred and twenty. Right, oh, do you really think so? <sighs> They're going to have to do you in to get rid of you. <laughs> <laughs> They'll bury your children and your grandchildren. Well, there's one I wouldn't mind. Tell me, how is our little project going? Need you ask. Has anybody ever seen me undertake anything without seeing it through to a successful conclusion? No. I think my greatest talent is as a matchmaker. Do you know, I don't think there are any two people in the world who, given a little time, I wouldn't in the end be able to get hitched. <laughs> given the time, I think I could have married off Joan of Arc to the Pope. <laughs> I don't see that there are any major snags oh. in our little business whenever I visit their house. I keep on and on about you, and I have told the mother your intentions towards Marianne. Your having seen the child sunning herself one day at her window while you were walking down the street. But how'd she take it? Oh, she received the proposition with a frenzy of joy. Oh. And when I told her that you would like her daughter to be a witness to the contract of marriage to be signed in this house this evening, well, she gave her wholehearted consent and entrusted her to me. <laughs> Rosine, necessity forces me to give Senor Anselm dinner this evening. And I, I, I would be very happy if Marianne would agree to be one of the guests. Yes, splendid. Huh? I shall bring her round here to meet your daughter this afternoon. And then, of course, she'll want to go to the fair. And then we'll round everything off by coming back here to dinner. I'll lend them my coach. Splendid. But uh, tell me, Rosine. Have you talked to the mother about what sort of diary she can give? I, I hope you've told her that she really must help her daughter make some sort of effort. I mean, she really ought to bleed herself dry at a time like this. You can't marry a girl off unless you... unless she brings something with her. What are you talking about? A girl like that will bring you 12,000 a year. 12,000 a year? Yes, of course. First of all, she's used to simple food. Hmm. You know, salad, cheese, milk, hmm. apples, that sort of thing, so... You won't have to keep an expensive table. No fancy soups, no bizarre puddings. Mm -hmm. She's not finicky like other women. Now that, there's no small thing for a start. That mm -hmm. should bring you, oh, at least 3,000 francs a year. Mm -hmm. Then, it is enough for her she keeps herself tidy and neat. Mm -hmm. She's not interested in superb clothes or sumptuous jewels or expensive furniture, all of which seem to arouse such passion in women today. Mm -hmm. Now that should be worth, oh, at least 4,000 francs a year. But better than all this, she can't stand gambling. Which, you must admit, isn't all that common in women today. You know, I know one woman lives 
quite close to me. She lost 20,000 francs at gambling last year. Ooh. Cards, dreadful. But let's take no more than a quarter of all that. Now, that's uh, 5,000 francs for gambling, 4,000 for clothes and jewels. That makes 9,000. Throw in the 3,000 we mentioned for food, and there you are. 12,000 francs over the odds. Well, yeah, it's, it's not bad, but it's not really real. Excuse me, aren't simple tastes real? Isn't a love of simple clothes real? Isn't a simple hatred of gambling real? Yeah, you can't make up a diary out of expenses that won't be incurred. I can't, I can't give a receipt for something I haven't had. It isn't real unless I've got it in my hand. Oh, you <laughs> have something in your hands, all right. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking to me about some estates they have in the colonies. Uh, Those, of course, would be yours. Uh, well, I'll have to look into that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, Prisine, there's one thing that worries me. Uh, the girl is young, as you know, and... Young people generally prefer the company of, well, indeed, love people of their own age. Uh, well, I can see that you don't know her very well. There is a little foible of hers that I must tell you about. She can't stand young men. She only likes old ones. Really? Yes, really. I wish you could have heard her talking about it. She says she can't even stand to look at a young man, but she's never happier, she says, than when she's gazing at a beautiful old man with a majestic beard. The older, the better, as far as she's concerned. So I do warn you not to try to make yourself look younger than you really are. They must be at least 60. Why, only four months ago she was engaged to be married, and she broke the whole thing off, and do you know why? Why? Well, the bridegroom looked as if he was only 56, and showed no sign of putting on glasses to sign the contract. <laughs> But those are the only reasons. They were. She said she couldn't be happy with only 56, and she could only adore noses with glasses on them. Well, this is all totally new to me. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh, it goes much farther than that. Yes. Do you know that she has in her room certain pictures, engravings? Do you know what they're of? No. Adonis, Hercules, Paris, Apollo. No, but you'd be wrong. They are of Saturn, Priam, Nestor, <laughs> and in pride of place. Methuselah. Oh, oh Rosie. Well, this is all very good. It's something I would never have thought. <laughs> you know, I'm very relieved she feels like this. You know, I think if I'd been a woman, I don't think I'd have liked young men either. I just can't understand what women see in them. No, they must be mad. How can you have common sense and love a youth that are all brawn and no brains? How can people become attached to animals? Well, that's what I always say. You know, you only have to put them next to a person like you to see the difference. Yeah? There's something about you that is strangely satisfying to look at. Oh, you seem framed and dressed for love. Do you really think so? <laughs> You're made of enchantment. Oh. You ought to be painted. <laughs> Would you just turn round a little, please? No. Oh, have you seen anything like it? What could be better? <laughs> Would you give us a little walk? And there isn't the slightest awkwardness. Well, there's nothing major wrong with me, thank God. Just a slight inflammation of the tubes, mm. which attacks me from time to time. No, it's nothing. It <laughs> suits you. <laughs> I've always thought you coughed rather gracefully. Oh, no. Now, Prisine, tell me about Marianne. She's never seen me. Hmm? No, 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 never seen you. But we're always talking about you. <laughs> and I haven't failed to point out the advantages of a husband like you. Oh, well, you've done very well. I'm much indebted to you. Oh, Monsieur. <laughs> Just a little favor that I would like to ask you. You see, I am up to my neck in a court case, and I'm afraid I might lose it all because I haven't got quite enough money. And I was wondering if you could see your way to helping me win it. You will not believe how happy Marianne will be when she finally sees you. Oh, you're just her sort of man. Your old-fashioned coat will make her feel happy for days. Shall I tell you what will really enchant her? Your old breeches. They're so out of date. She'll be mad for you. A lover in breeches is just her comfort. And you enchant me by saying no. so. <laughs> to be absolutely frank, monsieur, this court case is make or break, as far as I'm concerned. All I need is a little bit of help, and then I would be back on uh, my feet again. Oh, 
I wish you had seen the happiness with which she heard me talk about you when I enlisted mm. your virtues. Yeah. Joy sparkled in her eyes. She can't wait for the marriage to be signed, sealed, and concluded. Well, you have made me very happy, and I'm much obliged to oh, you. Monsieur, please, <laughs> don't refuse the help that I'm asking for. You see, I'd be an even keel again, then, of course, I would be much obliged to you. Yes, but goodbye. I must finish writing some letters. Uh, was... <laughs> Come on. Please don't refuse me the favor that I'm asking yes. you. You well, can't imagine look, the look, pleasure. I'm asking, uh, look, is someone I'm calling me? Uh, Monsieur, yes, I'll see you later this evening. What? Uh, yes, I'm coming. Oh. This is good. <laughs> I hope you catch a particularly nasty and lingering disease, preferably one with no cure. The skinflint was deaf to all my appeals. Ah, oh, well, not to worry. There's still the other side of the match. They're bound to give me something. 